Welcome to the last of the Benchmark Review Podcasts. Um, I've enjoyed doing these with you, but I'd like to go home now. Uh, and I'm doing this one for the second time. I had a little techno- uh, technological glitch, and so I had to re-record this one. All right, so we're going to be solving exponentials and answering some basic questions um, regarding exponential functions and exponential growth and decay. And I think we can do this in less than 30 minutes. All right, so we want to solve. When we're solving, the first thing you want to ask yourself is, can we rewrite? Can you rewrite it so the bases match? Because if the bases match, then you can just drop the exponents, uh, excuse me, drop the bases and set the exponents equal. So, you, and make sure, one thing that you want to do when you rewrite it, you have to remember to keep the same value. So, is there some number I can rewrite 8 and 32? In other words, is there some base that I can raise to a power and get 8? Well, we know 8 is 2 cubed. Right? So, 8 is the same as 2 cubed. 32 is the same as 2 to the 5th. So, that means that wherever I have an 8, I can replace it with a 2 cubed. You want to make sure that this is the value you keep. Got to keep that value. Okay? So, when you rewrite it, and you're going to replace it, it has to be replaced with something that's equal to 8 and equal to 32. And 2 cubed is equal to 8. 2 to the 5th is equal to 32. All right, so now we're going to um, replace our base. Oops. With those values above, so now we have 2 q to the 3 times x plus 8 equals 2 to the 5x. When the bases are the same, we can drop the bases. and set the exponents equal. So we have 3 to the x plus 8 equals 5 to the x, uh, 5x. And now distribute and solve. So uh, we're just going to remember to multiply our bases, or excuse me, multiply our exponents, and solve. And those are going to be our steps every time that we can rewrite them. All right, so we've got 3x plus 24 equals 5x. Subtract 3x from both sides. 24 equals 2x, and divide by 2, 12 is equal to x. So our answer is C. And you can always plug that back into a calculator and check. Do you have the same value? Is 8 to the, in this case it would be the 20th power, the same as 32 to the 12th power? Okay, so you can always plug it back into a calculator and check. Um, you won't get any false solutions on the exponential, so if there's a mistake, it's because you did something wrong. All right, so now our equation looks a little weird the way it's uh, formatted there. 3e to the negative 2x equals 5. Okay, so can you rewrite e and 5 so that the bases are the same? Well, when your base, one of your bases is e, you cannot do that. Um, remember, e is a irrational number. Um, so the only number, um, if I had a, a 1, I could rewrite 1 as e to the 0 power. But short of that, uh, can you rewrite so basis match? Not with e. Okay? So we have to solve it a different way. So we have two different ways to solve exponential equations. Uh, one is rewriting so the bases match, and then we can just drop them. And the other is how we're going to solve this problem here. Um, our first step, though, is we have to isolate our base. So our base has something with it right now. We need to isolate, and that means we need to divide by 3. So we have e to the negative 2x equals 5 thirds. When we can't rewrite, we solve by taking a log of both sides. Um, our variable is trapped up there in the exponent, so we need something that is the inverse of raising to a power. So the log in the same base 
is the inverse of the exponential. So we're going to take a log of both sides. And the log we're going to use is the one that goes with E. And the log that goes with E is natural log. So in this case, we have E, it's going to be natural log. So we have natural log of E to the negative 2x equals natural log of 5 thirds. Oops. There we go. Um, looks a little sloppy. 5 thirds. All right, so now power rule. X when it moves in front, negative 2x natural log e equals natural log 5 thirds. And now uh, natural log of e is just 1, so we have negative 2x equals natural log of 5 thirds. And all you have to do now to solve is divide by negative 2 and plug into a calculator. So we have x equals natural log of 5 thirds, we do that first, and then divide that whole amount by negative 2. So uh, I'll just put x equals up here. So now I have to grab a calculator. I'm just going to use a calculator and try and do this one-handed, um, rather than bringing out the, uh, on the calculator on my computer. So a natural log of 5 thirds divided by negative 2 gives us negative 0.255. And if we round it to two decimal places, that's negative 0.26. So that's our answer. All right, two down. A couple more to go. We want to find the value of x. And so can we rewrite? Can we write so 4 to some power and 8 to some power? Uh, or 4, um, can we replace that 4 and that 8 um, so the bases match? Well, 4 can be rewritten as 2 to a power, and 8 can be rewritten as 2 to a power. So if we replace the 4 with a 2 squared and the 8 with a 2 cubed, our bases will match. So we have, we're going to replace the 4 with 2 squared. So we have 2 to the 2 times 2x plus 5 power equals, excuse me, I meant to write 2, 2 to the 3 times 3x power. Okay? So all we've done is we've just replaced the 4 with the 2 squared, replaced the 8 with the 2 cubed. We still have the same value. So um, the bases match, so we can just drop them. So we have 2 times 2x plus 5 equals 3 times 3x. Okay, I'll just put the 3 on the other side. And that gives us 4x plus 10 equals 9x. Subtract 4x from both sides. And 10 equals 5x. Divide by 5. 2 is x. And that's our answer. Okay. So two ways to solve. The first way, try to rewrite it so the bases match. And when we can't, we solve by taking a log. So we have... Uh, 1 over 125 equals 25 to the 2x minus 1. So can we rewrite? Is 1 over 125, can that be rewritten in the same base as 25? Well, 25 is 5 squared. 125 is 5 cubed. So 1 over 125 would be 5 to the negative 3. So we, we can just replace that 1 over 125 with 5 to the negative 3 and replace the 25 with 5 squared. Bases match. We can drop the bases. So now we have negative 3 equals 2 times 2x minus 1. Distribute negative 3 equals 4x minus 2. Um, add yeah. Add 2 to both sides, and so if I add 2 here, we get negative 1 equals 4x and divide by 4. So x is negative 1 fourth. There we go. Okay, so not too bad. 
So it's usually easier to reach to rewrite them so the bases match. And then when you can't, you use logs. All right, so got to isolate your base first. Okay? The most horrible thing you could do is multiply 25 times 10 because only 10 is raised to a power, not to the 25. So our first step is we have to divide both sides by 25. Okay? So since we have a fraction on the other side, let's just multiply by 1 over 25. That's the same thing as dividing by 25. All right, so these would cancel. So we have 10 to the x plus 2 equals 1 over 625. Why did I put 1 over 125? I must have been thinking about the answer because 5 times 25 is 125. Now these ones, they look like they're kind of the same. You know, they have both divisible by 5, but I, I, there's, I can't rewrite 10 and 125 in the same base. Um, 125 is 5 to a power, and 10 is 10 to a power, and that's it. So I really can't rewrite these in the same base. So um, we're going to have to solve by taking a log. What log do we take for 10? Well, it's log base 10. So, and normally remember, we don't usually write it, but you can think, of, if you like, you can think there's a little 10 there when you don't see anything. So log 10, uh, so log of 10 to x plus 2 equals log, and it's understood this is base 10 of 1 over 125. Okay. So power of powers rule, the exponent moves in front, x plus 2, oops, log 10 equals one, um, log 10. Actually, I'm not going to write the 10 anymore. Just remember that our base is 10. We just don't write it. Uh, is log um, 1 over 125. All right, so now log 10 is just equal to 1. Right? The power you have to raise 10 to to get 10, that's just 1. So we have x plus 2 equals log 1 over 125. And now subtract 2 from both sides. So x is equal to log. Now I'm going to put this in parentheses because i got to take the log of that first and then subtract 2. So x is equal to Negative 4.0969. And that's our answer. Okay. So when 10 is your base and E is your base, you don't have to use the change of base rule. Uh, if it was something else, we'd have to use the change of base rule. How long will it take a sample of radioactive substance to decay to half of its original amount if it decays according to the function a of t equals 500e to the negative 0.202t, where t is the time in years. All right, so we have the equation. We are decaying, okay, so we're going to be having less. And we, we would be decaying because our we have e, and it's raised to a negative power, which means that this is decay. Right, so we want to know when we have half of our original amount, um, the starting amount is 500. So that means we want to know when we have half, and half therefore would be 250. All right, so 250 equals 500 e to the negative 0.202 t. Isolate e, so we have to divide both sides by 500. So we have 1 half equals e to the negative 0.202t. Take the natural log of both sides because it's e. So natural log 1 half equals natural log e to the negative 0.202t. Right, and exponent can move in front. 
and natural log of e is just 1. So we have natural log of 1 half equals negative 0.202t. And so to solve for t, you're going to take natural log of 1 half first, then divide that whole thing by negative 0.202. And our answer is... And divided by negative 0.202 is 3.43 years. Which makes sense because 20% uh, is, is a lot to lose. So there's our answer. Okay. So this wasn't too tricky. Um, we didn't even have to write the equation. It was already given to us. We just had to solve. So what's the equation of the relation? What's the equation of the relationship below? Um, and so our answer choice. I'm going to write them a little bit darker. I guess I shouldn't have chose green. But y equals eight times three to the x divided by two power. Um, y equals eight times one third to the x y equals 24 times 3 to the x and y equals 24 times 3 to the x divided by 2. Okay. So now let's look at, um, they're all exponentials. Okay. So now if we look between our values here, uh, 8 times what would give us 24? That's times 3. And you can also just take, to find your ratio, just take the one term and divide by the previous term. So 24 divided by 8 is 3. And 72 divided by 24 is 3. And same thing over here. Okay, so is our base 3? Okay, so does that mean it's one of these with the base of 3? Well, yes and no. Because... Look at the x values. They're going up by 2. So if they're going up by 2, we have to be going up by half as much as that. Okay. So notice here that we have our exponent divided by 2 for some of our choices. So it would have been, well, 3 to the x, that part would have been right, had our x values been going up by 1. But they're not. They're going up by 2, which means we're going to grow half as quickly. Um, so uh, it, it, we are going to have x divided by 2 as our exponent. Okay. Let's figure out our a value. Well, that's pretty easy. So the a value is our, is our y-intercept. Okay. a is, this, is our starting value. It's our y-intercept. So our y-intercept is 24. That's our starting value. Okay? Well, there's only one equation that meets that, and that's this one right here, or this one right here. Okay? Um, so our equation is 24 times 3 to the 1 half x power, okay? because um, we'd have to raise it to half as much, since that times 3 is for two exponents. What if we really weren't sure? Um, and we were second-guessing ourselves. What could we do to figure the answer out? You could plug in and see, do you get the right values? So you can do the same thing have a table of values and you're really not sure of the equation. You think you got it, you're second-guessing yourself. You can plug in the values. So, um, and make sure they work for all the values. So for instance, there for y equals 8 times 3 to the Oops, that's right, parentheses. X divided by 2 power. All right, so now what if we plug in 0? What happens? All right, do we get the, um, the right answer? Okay. So we have Y equals 8 times 3 to the 0 divided by 2 is 0. So 3 to the 0 power is 1. And 1 times 8, that's 8. And so that's not the right value. There, 0, 8's not a point on, on our function. So this one can't be right. So that's no. We don't get the right value. And we could do the same thing with the other equation, the other ones as well. So if you can't figure out the equation, it's multiple choice, 
plug in and see, do you get the right values? All right, so let's check and see, do we get 24 when we, get, when we plug in zero for the next equation? So 24 equals, and so I'm using that eight times uh, one third x, equals eight and, oops, yeah, 28 times one third to the zero. Well, one third to the zero is one. So I've got 24 equals eight times one. And 24 does not equal eight. So this one is a no. And we could check it with the third one. Um, so 24 equals 24 times three to the zero power. All right, so we get 24 equals 24 times three to the zero is one. Well, that one checks out. So is that the equation? Well, let's look at D and see if that one checks out for that point. So 24 equals 24 times three to the zero divided by two. Zero divided by two is zero. So 24 equals 24 times three to the zero. Well, that works out as well, because that would be 24 times one. That works out as well. So they, both these two, I'm just going to put a yes for now, work out for the zero value. Because whether I have, you know, I raise three to the zero power, or I divide by two, zero by two and then raise, I'm still going to get the same value. Does it work for another value? So just because it works for one isn't good enough. Let's plug in the two and see does it still work. All right, so, whoops. All right, so um, we're checking the C and D there with two. So we'd have 72 equals, and I'm going to check C first, equals 24 times 3 squared. So 72 equals 24, 3 squared is 9. Well, 8 times 9 is 72, not 24. So now it doesn't work for 272. So that is a no. On the other hand, 72 equals 24 times 3 to the um, 2 divided by 2 power would give us 72 equals 24 times 3 to the first and 70, 24 times 24 times 3 is 72. So that one checks out. So this one is a yes, and we checked it, and it's still a yes. So that's another way, if you get stuck, plug the values into, the equation, into the, each of the equation. Do you get a true statement? And don't stop at one value. You saw it worked for two. Okay, just don't say, hey, it worked for one. I'm going to stop at C. I'm not going to even try D. Make sure you check all the values until you're sure it can only be one answer. After two values, we're sure it can only be D. Okay? Oops, some reason this is twice. All right, so um, Michael invested 5000 into an account that has a 5% annual interest rate. Doesn't say the words compounded, just says 5% annual interest. So this is simple interest. What equation best describes this investment after t years? So we have two ways of writing a simple exponential equation. Either y equals ab to the x, or y equals a, and our b is 1 plus or minus our rate of increase. So anytime we're not just given our base, but we're given percent increase or decrease. You see we're, we've got a percent there. Okay? you're going to add that to 1, okay? So it's, because it's not, not the, the interest, it's, you know, it's not, the, it's not the, just the more, it's the what we get to keep, okay? It's not which of what you lose or what's additional, but what you get to keep. You get to keep 100% of your money, that's what the 1 is, plus 5%, 5.5% more. So the equation, a is our starting value, and Michael invested 5,000. So A equals 5,000 times 1. This is, we're increasing, plus 0.055. Okay. So we're increase, our money's increasing. It's not decreasing. And you don't put it in a bank and get less money. Uh, other, oops, to the, to the uh, T power. 
Otherwise, you better go find a new bank. So A equals 5,000 times 1.055 ah, to the T, which is B. Okay, that's the correct answer. So um, A is wrong because they forgot to add the 1. So this is going to be a lot of decay. Um, they're they're going to lose all their money in a very short time. C here, it, this is 55%, not 5.5%. And this would be decay. Um, so if you're going to lose money, uh, you probably should find a new bank. All right. So just make sure that when you have a, a, a percent increase or decrease, you add or subtract that from 1. Okay. And, and then, of course, your starting value. So that was a nice, easy one. BDX is telling us it's an exponential equation. What's the y-intercept of the function? So remember the y-intercept, it's the value of y when x equals 0. For, so uh, first of all, we got to figure out our, our base okay, to figure out our y-intercept. And then we can just go backwards and find the value of y when x is 0. Okay? So we'll just find the value. Uh, we'll kind of continue the, the graph. You know, we'll start off with 2, and then we'll find it for 1 and for 0. So our base, to find our base, okay, we just take any value and divide it by the previous value. So 54 divided by 18. So we're dividing um, f of 3 by f of 2. Okay. Right, so 54 divided by 18 is 3. So 3 is our base. Okay. So we have to multiply each time by 3 each time to get to the next value, which means if we want to go the other way, we'll have to, you can either think of it as divide by 3 or multiply by 1 third. So that means that when x is 1, y is going to be 18 divided by 3, or 6. And when x is 0, y is going to be 6 divided by 3, or 2, which means our y-intercept is 2. That's all there is to that one. So it looked trickier than it was because of the wording. Which, I think this might be my last question. Which equation models the data in the table? All right, so we've got Four, four functions here. They all have the same three numbers in them. Fours and three, did I say three numbers? Two numbers, fours and threes. <laughs> fours and threes. Well, I guess an X is a number. Stands for a number. All right, so first of all, we should figure out our base. Because okay. that's going to eliminate two of these choices right off the bat. All right, so what is our, oops. No, no, oh, oh, we're good, we're good. Okay. I looked a little too quickly. All right, so what's our base? What do we have to multiply to get to the next value? I was afraid I typed in a wrong number. Um, so we take one number and divide it by the previous number. Okay? So be careful. Don't divide 16 by, um, don't, don't divide 64 by 16. It'd be the other way around. So we, would, we can divide f of 1, for instance by f of 0. Or you can divide f of 2 by f of 1, if you like that better. Okay. So f of 1 is 16. f of 0 is 64, which reduces to 1 fourth. f of 2, we've got this, we got the same answer, is 4. f of 1 is 16, and that's 1 fourth. And you can see that with f of 3 and f of 2, well, that would be 1 fourth. So that's our base. Our base is 1 fourth. Well, I don't see a 1 fourth. Could this be wrong? Well, 1 fourth is the same as 4 to the negative 1 power. They are the same. Well, that looks like a ninth there. One thing our base is not, our base is not 3. So you are gone because you have the wrong base, right? So one we want uh, 
so since we don't have a one, we don't have a one fourth. We're looking for a four, but we're looking for a four which is going to be negative. So we want to raise four to the negative power. Hmm, which one of these is it? We're down to two. We have C and we have D. Or, well, D. Sorry, it's supposed to be D. What if you're stuck? And you can't figure out which one of these two it is. Okay? Um, you can always check by plugging in the values and seeing which gives you a true statement. And then we'll talk about why that's the right answer. All right, so let's plug in the values into each one of them and see. All right, so we're going to plug in for x and see if we get the right answer. All right, so we have 64 equals 4 and then to the 3 minus 0 power, right? Because I'm, I'll, I'm I should write this above it. So f of x equals, I have to remember I can't point at things and have you see it, 4 to the 3 minus x. So that's the one we're, we're, we're working with. All right, so I plugged in 64 for the f of x and I plugged in 0 for the x. And I get 64 equals 4 cubed. That one works out. Well, does that number work out for, for d? All right, let's see. So 64 equals, uh, and I, you know what, let me write the equation above it first. So f of x equals 4 to the x minus 3 power. So 64 equals 4 to the 0 minus 3 power. That gives me 64 equals 4 to the negative 3 power. Uh oh, 64 does not equal 1 over 64. So this is a no. This one is a yes. And it will work out for all the other values as well. And since uh, an A won't work out, A and B are really, really wrong. Um, you're not going to raise 3 to a power and end up with 64, or 16, or 4. Um, so, why was C the right answer and not D, besides the fact we plugged in? How could we know maybe if we were, if we were checking it? Well, we want our exponent to be negative to, make, to give us the reciprocal. Which is the exponent, the part that needs to be negative? X needs to be negative. To make this decay. Okay. This is decay, it's the x that needs to be negative. And our x is negative. Okay. We've got 3 minus x, the negative is on the x. So for decay, if, it, if you've got a positive base and you still want to show decay, you need a negative exponent. And it's the x that needs to be negative. Okay? So that's why C is the correct answer. If you, get, if you get stuck, though, you can always do the plug and chug. I think I have no more questions. I have no more questions for you. This is the end for me, too. I'm going home. All right, so I hope this helps a whole lot, and let me know if you have questions. Bye.